we are going to learn what is a trading account so as discussed earlier final accounts or financial statements has five parts okay so one is trading account then you have profit and loss account then you have profit and loss appropriation account then balance sheet and then notes to account okay so there may be some additional reports also as required by the management but these are the basic format of final account of financial statement so trading account is one of the part of final account so the main purpose of trading account is to find a gross profit okay so what is a gross profit gross profit is your sales minus cost of goods sold okay so this is the main purpose of preparing a trading account that is to find out a gross profit now in case of trading account there are two things one is if your business is of trading okay or retail business then there will be only purchases and sales correct in that case what all will be included in your trading account it will be mostly your opening stock then there will be expenses incurred in bringing the goods to the go down okay and making them ready for the sale that is some uh, packing of the materials or a freight paid on the purchases octroi ex excise duty and so on okay but if you have a manufacturing business then your cost of goods sold will include all the purchases of raw materials purchases of packing materials then your wages and salaries direct salaries of the employees then your factory electricity cost and so on so basically the purpose of trading account is to find a gross profit that is your sales minus cost of goods sold okay now let's see the format of the trading account and let's discuss all the items in the trading account one by one now this is a format of trading account trading account for year ending so and so trading account for quarter ending so and so trading account for month ended so and so so if you notice here trading account is for a particular period okay say if trading account is for year ending march 2016 then trading account will have all the transactions from 1st april to 31st march 2016 if it is for a quarter ending it will have all transactions for that particular quarter and if it is for month ending then it will have all the particulars about that end of the month okay now if you see it's sim the format is similar to ledger account except for the date okay so date is not given because what happens is see if we are preparing a trading account for a year ending say 31st march 2016 then at the year end whatever is the balance in your all the nominal account that is so your opening stock then your purchases purchase return carriage and freight inwards okay i mean all the direct expenses and direct sales that will be transferred to your trading account at the end of the year okay so let's see each and every item which affects the trading account one by one first is opening stock okay now this is generally the first item that is there in your trading account now whatever was the closing stock of the last year must be opening stock of the current year okay it will be always found in the trial balance hmm. now in case of the trading trading 
concerned there will be only one opening stock okay that is your finished goods whatever you are purchasing and selling okay but in case of manufacturing industry you will have opening stock of raw materials then opening stock of goods that are work in progress work in progress it means which are in the process of production okay they are neither raw materials nor finished goods then you will have some opening stock of finished goods okay then there may also be some packing materials okay so all this op opening stock you will have all this opening stock and all this will total opening stock will come in your trading account so that is a first entry generally in your trading account okay then we move on further in the next entry will be purchases okay so purchase now as explained earlier in case of trading you may have purchase of your finished goods okay but in case of manufacturing industry you will have purchase of raw materials then you will have some purchases of packing materials also okay so you'll have all details of purchases now there may also be some purchase returns okay the purchase return account will actually show a credit balance okay but what we do is on the pre debit side of your trading account we show a net instead of showing your purchase return on the credit side of trading account what we do is we reduce purchase return from your purchases and this will show your net purchases okay your purchase return will always show a credit balance okay but instead of showing it on your credit side of your trading account we are reducing it from purchases and showing a net purchase that total purchase minus the return so this is way of presenting your purchases in the trading account now let's see the next item next is carriage and freight inward so carriage and freight inward so carriage and freight inward is an expense okay expenses incurred so this item should be debited to trading account it is an expense and it will already show a debit balance in the ledger account now what is carriage and freight inward is any freight or carriage that is transportation cost which is incurred to bring material to the firms go down okay bring material to firm or factory go down now material material here means only your goods okay it does not include any expenses which is incurred for purchase of asset or bringing any asset okay only for the purpose of goods whatever is the carriage and freight inward that is it is the expenses that are incurred to bring in your stock okay to your firm or factory go down all those expenses are included here okay now the next one to manufacturing wages now in case of manufacturing industry there will be some wages which are paid to the workers in the factory okay including your wages which are paid to your stores department that is in go down department okay then this should also include all your outstanding wages okay whatever are the outstanding wages 
that also will be included here however if there are some wages which are include paid for the worker for installation of any asset all those wages will not be included here okay only for the purpose of manufacturing goods which are part of your day to day business only those wages should be included here okay basically we are finding cost of goods sold okay to find the cost of goods sold we need only manufacturing wages which are incurred for the purpose of producing goods next there may be some power and fuel cost in the factory okay which is used for the purpose of uh electricity which is consumed or there may be some fuel expenses which are incurred in the factory for the purpose of production of goods okay all those expenses we need to debit to a trading account then there may be some lighting cost factory lighting cost correct electricity consumed for providing a light in the factory or to run the fans in the factory all those costs should be included here right then there may be some rent okay factory rent there may be some factory rent which is been paid say your factory premises is not owned it is on the lease basis then you need to pay that factory rent that factory rent needs to be added here to find a cost of goods sold then there may be some other expenses also say there may be some direct salaries now direct salaries may include your salary to some supervisor of factory okay supervisor or factory all this salaries which are related to your factory and which are for the purpose of production should be included in this that is trading account okay now let's see your credit side of a trading account okay the credit side of a trading account the first item in the credit side of the trading account is your sale okay both for manufacturing as well as for trading industry both will have their sale okay so sale of your finished goods in case of manufacturing industry and in trading industry your stock whatever stock you're trading in okay because in trading industry there won't be any finished goods and raw materials okay now the way we had shown purchase returns we have reduced it from purchases to find a net purchase similarly in case of sales also we will reduce sales return now sales return will show a debit balance okay debit balance so instead of showing it on the debit side of the trading account what we are doing is we are reducing it from your total sale to find the net sales okay so whatever amount we are taking in the trading account is a net sales okay this is a part of presentation now the next items which may come here are there may be some there may be some taxes or excise duty which are included in your purchases okay and for which you may get some credit okay that is you may get some tax benefit or credit all those tax benefits okay, which are included in your purchases for example your excise duty okay mod vat credit excise duty credit okay so all this duty drawbacks which you get okay all those will be presented on your credit side the logic here is that these are included in your purchases so they have been included in your cost of goods sold now if you are getting some tax benefit 
you need to reduce it in order to find a correct gross profit okay since this tax benefits are related to the purchases you need to in include it in your trading account okay this is a logic behind this then the last item which is there in your trading account is closing stock okay now this closing stock is valued at end of the year okay in case of trading concern you will have only one stock that is stock of finished goods or whatever stock you are dealing in in case of your manufacturing concern you will have stock of raw material then you will have some stock of your wip that is work in progress then you will have a stock of finished goods also then you may have some stock of your packing materials also okay now all the stocks will be included in your credit side of trading account okay now what is the logic in including the closing stock okay so the logic is that see, instead of see we, what we have done is on the debit side of trading account we have included our purchases minus purchase return that is our total purchases okay and you have included your opening stock also but in the case of sales okay we have included only the selling price of the goods which are been sold so in order to find out what are the goods sold or the quantity to reduce the impact of the purchases to the extent of goods sold we are including our closing stock in our credit side of trading account uh, i'll give you one example say if you have some let's take it here say if you have some opening stock of say opening stock of some 100 units okay and you purchase some 900 units okay then you have sold 800 units and your closing stock has 200 units of a particular commodity so it's a trading concern now what has happened in your trading account is the in opening stock the cost of this 100 goods are included here in opening stock okay their cost is included here 100 goods cost of 900 goods which are purchased are included here okay so if you see your trading account debit side you will have cost of 1000 units right but in your credit side in your sales you have included selling price of only 800 units correct now if you don't include closing stock what will happen is your trading account will have cost of 1000 units on the debit side whereas you will have only selling price of 800 units on the credit side so if you calculate your gross profit on this basis your gross profit will not show a correct picture since you will have a cost of 1000 and selling price of only 8 800 unit so in order to nullify the effect of purchase purchase of 200 units you what you do is you add cost of those 200 units to your credit side of your trading account so this is nothing but your closing stock that is the reason you are including a closing stock on credit side of trading account 
okay so cost of 200 units is included as your closing stock okay so now what you will have you will have cost of 100 units on debit side then on on the credit side you will have selling price of 800 unit but at the same time you will also have the cost of 200 units so that in the when you calculate a gross profit that cost of 200 unit gets nullified because of valuing a closing stock thus your gross profit will be gross profit of 800 units that are been sold during the year that is the reason you include your closing stock in your trading account then what you do you find out the total and close your trading account you find the total and then you find a gross profit okay or there may also be a gross loss carried forward or gross profit carried forward okay this is how you prepare your trading account now we will see one example of how the journal entries are transferred to your trading account now this is an extract of trial balance as on 31st march 2016 you have opening stock then debit balance then purchases you have debit balance purchase return credit balance then you have all the expenses that is factory wages factory power and fuel and factory rent as debit balance then sales you have credit balance and sales return as debit balance now journal entries in the books of so and so and then last is the closing stock okay so it's a total closing stock now let's start passing one all the journal entries for transfer of the balances in the trading account okay so for transfer of balances in trading account so this is just an extract of a trial balance this is not the entire trial balance so as on 31st march 2016 okay the first part is your opening song so opening stock is showing a debit balance so the entry will be trading account debit to opening stock account okay say jv numbers one amount is twenty thousand okay next is the purchases and purchase return so now what we'll do is for purchase and purchase return we'll pass one combined entry now purchases is showing a debit balance of eighty thousand and purchase return is showing a credit balance of twenty thousand so what we'll do to transfer the purchase ba Pur balance in the purchases account we have to credit the purchases account so purchases account credit how much you will credit 80,000 okay then to transfer the balance in the purchase return account it is showing a credit balance so what we'll do we have to debit purchase return account okay so how much it is 20,000 okay now 80,000 is credited 20,000 is debit amount so the net we are transferring it to trading account debit side so the entry is trading account debit purchase return account debit to purchases account 80,000 since we are showing only net purchases in trading account we are posting a combined entry okay to show a net purchases then next is the expenses factory wages factory power and fuel and factory rent all these are showing debit balance so we have to transfer it to trading account so the entry will be trading account debit to factory wages
ट्रेडिंग अकाउंट डेबिट टू फैक्ट्री वेजेस अकाउंट वट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ फैक्ट्री वेजेस फिफ्टी थाउजेंड टू फैक्ट्री पावर एंड फ्यूल अकाउंट ओके वॉट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ फैक्ट्री पावर एंड फ्यूल पावर एंड फ्यूल इज ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड एंड द नेक्स्ट इज फैक्ट्री रेंट अकाउंट रेंट अकाउंट सो वॉट इज द बैलेंस इन द फैक्ट्री रेंट अकाउंट फैक्ट्री रेंट अकाउंट इश्यू आएगा थर्टी थाउजेंड बैलेंस सो वी आर पोस्टेड अ कंबाइंड एंट्री सो द डेबिट साइड टोटल विल बी वन लैक फाइव थाउजेंड ओके नाउ द नेक्स्ट एंट्री नेक्स्ट एंट्री इज सेल्स एंड सेल्स रिटर्न ना सेल्स इज वन लैक सिक्सटी थाउजेंड एंड सेल्स रिटर्न इज टेन थाउजेंड सेल्स अकाउंट इज शोइंग अ क्रेडिट बैलेंस सो वी हैव टू डेबिट टू ट्रांसफर दैट बैलेंस वी हैव टू डेबिट दैट अकाउंट सो द बैलेंस विल बी नील सो द एंट्री विल बी सेल्स अकाउंट डेबिट सो How much is the amount? One lakh sixty thousand. Sales account is showing amount of one lakh sixty thousand. Then sales return. Sales return is showing a debit balance of ten thousand. So we have to credit. So to sales return account ten thousand. okay then we have to transfer both this balances to trading account so we are crediting the trading account for the balance amount that is 1 like 60000 minus 10000 so that net sales goes to the trading account okay so this was the entry for the sales then subsequently we'll have a entry for the closing stock closing stock is how much 150000 Now, if you see whatever was the opening stock, we have already transferred it to the trading account. So the balance in the stock account is nil. Now, for the purpose of recording closing stock, what we'll do is we'll post one entry, thirty-first March two thousand sixteen. Now, stock account debit to trading account the closing stock has to appear on the credit side of trading account as discussed okay now the stock account debit how much is the amount 150000 now the stock account will show a debit balance now this 150000 will appear in the balance sheet asset sets okay as a stock okay because this is a stock which is there in our books at the end of the period so it will appear in the balance sheet asset side now we have passed out the journal entries now we'll post this entries in the trading account and we'll prepare one trading account and find out the gross profit so this is a format of the trading account in the books of so and so trading account for the year ended 31st march 2006 then you have debit credit then particular amount amount particular amount amount so all the entries will be at uh, as on 31st march 2006 so there is no date column okay now let's post all the entries okay now first is trading account to opening stock 20000 so on the debit side of trading account we'll post this entry Amount is twenty thousand. Okay, then the next entry is trading account debit sixty thousand, purchase return account debit twenty thousand to purchases account eighty thousand. Okay, 
so let's pass this entry so for the presentation purpose what we'll do is trading account is debited so on the debit side of trading account to purchases account so what is the amount of purchases total purchases it's 80,000 okay so we'll put at 80,000 in the inner column then less purchase returns okay so what is the amount of purchase returns 20,000 20,000 so the net purchase is 80,000 minus 20,000 that is 60,000 so if you see the journal entry you are trading account is debited for 60,000 right this one JV number 2 okay now the third one trading account debit to factory wages to factory power and fuel and factory rent okay 50,000 25,000 30,000 respectively so factory wages is how much 50,000 so on the debit side to factory wages 50,000 correct then to factory power and fuel 25,000 to factory power and fuel 25,000 correct then to factory rent 30,000 to factory rent 30,000 okay now we'll post the next entry next entry is sales account debit 1,60,000 to sales return account 10,000 to trading account 1,50,000 so trading account is credited so on the credit side of trading account first we'll put by sales so what is the total sales gross sales sales is 1,60,000 correct 1,60,000 less sales return so how much is the sales return 10,000 10,000 okay so your net sale is 1,50,000 okay so if you see your trading account is credited by 1,50,000 in this entry now the next entry stock account debit to trading account now this is a closing stock so buy closing stock how much is the amount one lakh fifty thousand now since all entries are posted we'll calculate the total the total of credit side is one lakh fifty one lakh fifty that is three lakh so three lakh minus total of debit side so what is the total of debit side so total of debit side is 185000 so 3 lakh minus 185000 so when credit side total is greater we have gross profit carried forward so that is 115000 okay now this gross profit is transferred to your profit and loss account so the, so the entry for the transfer of your gross profit will be now if you see your gross profit is showing your trading account is showing a credit balance okay since the credit side total is greater than the debit side so you have to debit your trading account so the entry for the gross profit will be trading account debit to profit and loss account one lakh fifteen thousand one lakh. 
so this gross profit will appear on credit side of your p and l account now if you see your trial balance and your trading account okay so if you see your trial balance you can see that all the debit balances in the trial balance okay will appear on your debit side of trading account okay now see opening stock 20000 so 20000 is appearing on the debit side of trial balance purchases is showing a debit balance of 80000 so 80000 is appearing on debit side of trial balance less purchase return okay purchases have to be recorded at a net so net purchases is 80000 minus 20000 then factory wages factory power and fuel factory rent all three are debit balance so they are appearing on the debit side of the trading account okay then sales sales is showing a credit balance of 160 so it is appearing on the credit side of trading account sales return sales return is showing a debit balance of 10000 so we are reducing it from your credit side of trading account okay instead of showing it on the debit side that is 150000 and then you are finally you have closing stock of 150 so closing stock as on 31st march is rupees 150 which is appearing on your credit side of your trading account so this is how your trading ac account will appear okay thank you